Praise God. Today we're going to talk about something that I really like to talk about. But it's most important to talk about because it happens every second of the day. And so our subject on today is grief support as we discuss grief and grieving. Amen? What is grief? Sadness. When a person is going through grief, we're talking about shock and denial, anger and depression, relief and honor, and return to love. Amen. Praise God. You know, God is a wonderful God. And to be a mother is a very special gift. Today, you know, I'm thinking about my eldest son that passed. And it must have been around February over 20 three years ago when he came home from jail and he sat down beside me and said to me, Ma, I'm not going back to jail anymore. And he also said to me, Mom, I'm HIV positive. And when he told me that, that took all the life out of me. He told me how he was raped in jail. And brothers and sisters, you know, I don't know how I survived what my son told me. I can only say it was God who got me through it. Because I sat there and I could not think of anything but the fact that my son was going to die before I was. And we know children aren't supposed to die before their parents. And yet, I was sitting there thinking how my son was going to die before me. And how would I survive this? Since we know your first child is your strength. And God bless me with a male child. I remember like it was yesterday when he was about three years old. And I said to myself one day, I said, you know, I got to have more children because if something happened to this child, I would be lost. And yes, God blessed me later to have other children, praise God. But today, I'm thinking about Snoop and I'm saying, how could his death benefit you today? And the only thing I could say is, bon voyage to my son. It took courage to say goodbye to him. When I saw him for the very last time in the hospital. And I can remember it like it was yesterday. I went in there and his lifeless body just laid in the bed. And I spoke to him and I said to him, open up your eyes. And when he opened up his eyes, the Irish, the color of his eyes was missing. The only thing I could see was the white of his eyes. And I knew he pretty much was gone. But I thank God that I was there. Praise God. I thank God that I was at that bedside and that I experienced that experience. I mean, as a nurse, 
you experience death. But it's not the same when it is your own flesh and blood. Praise God. You know, two and a half years prior to his death, his kidneys shut down. And he had to go on dialysis. And God let me know ahead of time that my child had two and a half years and some time, but that would be up to him. Praise God. I'm praising God because God let me know before time. My son actually died two and a half years and one day because he made a decision. He no longer wanted dialysis any longer. He did not like those needles. I thank God that God prepared me before time so that I could be ready for it. And the most interesting thing that happened was I had gotten married about eight months prior no, about a year and eight months prior to my son's death, because he died in 2008, and I got married in 2006 <clears throat> to my third husband, who was acting out the whole time. And I had told him, I said, you know, God told me my son was dying. I don't think I was really thinking quite straight as I think about it today I couldn't have been because if I was I wouldn't have really I really would not have gotten married but I think I thought about losing my son and needing somebody in my life to hold me up and of course that did not happen in this last marriage and why is it important that I tell you this today? I believe because I'm trying to get you to understand that when a storm comes in our lives, it comes in drools. It just doesn't come one at a time. It pours. And God will have you ready for that storm. Amen. God gives us the courage to trust him, even in the face of death. Courage to believe that he is too wise to make a mistake and too good to do wrong. May God continuously remind us that this world is not our home. We're only to pitch a tent, not build a homestead. Amen. And when it's our time, we too will hear a song and cross over. Praise God. Today, This message is for women that are grieving. Grieving the loss of a child. It could also be for men. But this is still Women's History Month. And I want to go through some things that women go through throughout a lifetime, the loss of a loved one, whether it's your child or your parent, we must grieve. There's women that's mourning the loss of a stillborn child. I know I had a sister who was born right after I was. And my mother always said she was born stillborn. 
And I, I know for a fact that my mother grieved her loss. Grief is certainly something most of us will experience at some time in life. Grief is universal and the method by which one handles pain. Grief is a normal response to the loss of a significant person, especially an unborn child or a child that grew up into adulthood or a child that did not reach the age of five. Whatever the age of the child, the mother is still grieving. Praise God. You will face the emptiness and the difficult task of readjusting. This period will include viewing the reality of the loss, admitting the pain, and adjusting to a home environment in which the child never came home from the hospital. The most difficult part will be answering the question where is the child? Where is that new baby? Or where is that loved one? What did you have? A boy or a girl? The grief over the death of a stillborn child is more difficult because the loss is unexpected, untimely, and sudden. Daily you will battle, the feelings of unfinished business, guilt, failure, and shame. For parents, the death of a child is one of life's most devastating losses. Only someone who has had this experience can fully understand the feelings associated with the loss of a child. This experience should bring the parents closer to one another in an effort to cope. And I tell you, my first husband is drawing nearer since the death of our son. Amen. Even though he's married to another woman and they're doing just fine, he still takes time out to call me from time to time. To make sure that I'm okay. Amen. It doesn't always. However. Some couples who were unable to cope with their loss. Soon watch their marriages flounder. As the unrealistic blame game begins. But who can you blame? Life and death. Is not in our hands. Amen. That's why couples facing the loss of a child need to rely heavily on their relationship to God. This is what I had to do. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Your relationship with Christ will give you support, meaning, and hope. For the future. Through a daily personal encounter with Christ, you will find his comfort and peace in time of mourning. When a grieving person refuses to consider the claim, Christ, healing, strength, and comfort, there is no hope. You will experience prolonged periods of shock, numbness, denial. Intense crying, restlessness, loneliness, and insomnia. However, daily prayer, singing, verbal statements of God's promises, positive thoughts of overcoming, and reading the scriptures will help soften the pain. Accepting God's strength and support can ease the grieving process. Praise God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The quiet support of others can help sustain you through these difficult times. I just want to give you my condolences on today. As you begin to recognize the stages of grief, you will learn how to walk and grow through this experience. And I just want to pause for a moment and talk about the app six stages of grief since the last election. The first is denial. It's a hung parliament. This can't be happening to us, is what you're going to think. Two, anger. Let's blame Kevin, Paul, Jane. Three, bargaining. We'll do anything for a few more years, even a deal with the Greens. Four, depression. Even with the support of the Greens, we're going to die a horrible death. Five, anger is a current stage. Let's blame the Greens. It's their fault. Six, acceptance. Political oblivion is okay. Let's change back to Kevin and prepare for it. Amen. For parents, that is no easy task. Grief comes without warning. Grief can only be conquered when it is faced honestly with divine help and the support of other people. Thank God for the widely available sources of help from family members, friends, ministers, and physicians. After many days of hopelessness, you will learn to live with the memory of your Lord. You will learn to see that person and smile and have joy in your heart. This experience will help you mature and make you better equipped to reach out to others. You can go through this experience with God, who provides all the comfort you need. You can read 1 Corinthians 15 or Psalms 23, 3-4, 55, 17, 61, 1-2 and 63. Psalms 119, 28, Isaiah 53, 3-4, 2 Corinthians 4, 14, and 5, 8, 1 Thessalonians 4, 14, and 18. Amen. You must remember that one of the fruit of the Spirit is long suffering and we all must go through suffering we don't want to but we will go through the physical pain the scriptures say be patient therefore brethren until the coming of the lord be ye also patient Stabilize your heart, for the coming of the Lord draweth near. James 5, 7-8 The Bible does not give any easy answer to the question of suffering. Suffering, however, is assured. Job was a perfect and an upright man who feared God and shunned evil. Job 2 and 3 Yet even he experienced severe pain and never uncovered the reason why God allowed him to suffer. Sometimes in our suffering, our human instinct leads us to ask the question, 
Why God? The fifth chapter of James tells us to be patient until the Lord comes. How does one remain patient in view of continuous, seemingly endless suffering? Asking one to be patient in the midst of suffering is a difficult request. Remember that even in suffering, the sovereignty of God prevails. Job persevered and was finally able to see what the Lord had in his divine plan for him. We may not understand the reasons why, but rest assured that God is full of mercy and compassion. God is your help in every need. God feeds your every hunger. God walks beside you night and day through every moment of your way. Even in our suffering, God is with us. Amen. The New Testament emphasizes the partnership between suffering and joy. Joy comes from the knowing that God is truly our shepherd. Amen. And suffer with us through our pain. God is full of mercy and compassion, helping us in our needs, feeding us in our hunger, walking with us night and day. We can rest assured that even in our suffering, God is with us. And this just reminds me of the story or the scriptures that says, that joy will come in the morning. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this word on grieving today. Bless your people, Lord. Give them the strength to go through the other side. To remember their loved ones with love and joy in their heart. And Father, we also ask for the peace of Jerusalem. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen.